Memphis Street Outlaws this week kind of brought back some of those nostalgic memories of Street Outlaws. And it's because they are racing race cars on the street versus, you know, when a lot of people think of street racing, they think of their daily drivers, you know, that they drive back and forth to work or that are capable of driving back and forth to work to that's their idea of street racing, not a full-blown, you know, sub four-second car on the street. And JJ and them raced some of the most legitimate street racers that they have raced yet. You know, the guys that we've seen this Monday night and will be carried over into next Monday night on Street Outlaws Memphis is full-blown street race guys. With that being said, let's kick it off right here. Just because we're dumbasses don't mean you can be too. So don't do anything we do at home. Public service announcement. These videos have the full intentions to be used as conversational tools and purposes only. Anything that is expressed in these videos and videos before and after has the sole purpose of that reason. I know a lot of this stuff is repetitive. I hope that you can understand that. Again, these are for conversational purposes only. The comment box on these videos is for that purpose. Thanks for watching. We seen that it was the legend, Barefoot Ronnie Pace and his group that had come to race Memphis. There is some pretty good rivalries going on with them already. Midget, which is JJ's wife, Trisha, has outrun Ronnie a couple of times and he was ready for redemption. And Ronnie brought out his Nova that you've seen on all of the shows so far. He has went through four or five cars that we have seen on Street Outlaw since it come on. He started with a Chevy 2, a black Chevy 2 that very first time we ever seen Ronnie Pace would have been season one. He raced Daddy Dave in the Sonoma. Daddy Dave outrun him and he doesn't have a real good track record with racing the Street Outlaws on the show. But when it comes down to no cameras and real cash days, legit, been doing it as long as anybody can remember, there's nobody that should come before Ronnie Pace. Amazing respect for the guy. He did not evolve when a lot of the rest of them did, but then again, he still works a nine to five and he can also drive his car to go get something to eat if he wanted to. So there is a lot of respect amongst everybody in the street racing, street outlaws world for a man like Ronnie Pace. He did bring some familiar faces back. If you can go back to when JJ hosted his first arm drop, grudge wars, cash days, whatever it was called, when he hosted it in the OKC, when he won small tire and O'Heavy and Big Chief won the big tire, there were some familiar faces then. Johnny Brown, JB, he raced in the big tire against Jackie Knox. He caught him out first round, and he actually won the very first cash days ever, and he was there this Monday night on Memphis Street Outlaws, and while you didn't see him race as far as in the clips, but this week, he might next week, I'm not sure, but it just brought out a lot of nostalgic feelings for me as far as the street racing world goes. Makes you think about it when people like Ronnie Pace show up. Ronnie Pace has done it all when it comes to that. He even went on No Prep Kings with a first gen. It was a 67 or 8 Camaro. And he is still kind of stuck in those days as far as what evolution has done to the street race cars. You cannot take one of these cars that you are used to seeing on Memphis and take it to No Prep Kings because they are not the same caliber of cars. You can put a lot more power down at the racetrack even though it is on a No Prep surface than you can on any street. But it brought back a lot of feelings and a lot of you know thoughts and what the show started out at. With that being said, when the show come on, it was talking about Midget's car, Heifer. They was putting a new motor in it. It was a 632, which is, a 632 nowadays is what a 350 was in, you know, the late 80s, early 90s. It was just the go-to motor for a street car. And while it's not something you're gonna see in everybody's shop, it is a pretty common engine, a base engine to start with. There's even a class that is Outlaw 632, and that is what it is, 632 cubic inch motors in the cars. 
but they are putting a bigger motor in heifer, or they did. So the reason I even bring that up is think back to Street Outlaws 405 when it first started. You know, the cars were still, you know, full interior cars. I remember one of the first times I ever seen Chuck open the doors on his car, it was, you know, still had door panels and it, it was a full blown car. They all had radiators and they drove them. Um, there's pictures and videos of Murder Nova picking up his son Aiden from school in the Murder Nova. And as evolution, things, you know, motors get bigger, they go faster, you know, one guy goes faster, so the other nine has to go faster. And as bad as I hate to say it, that's what Memphis is doing slowly. They are making their cars faster and it's just evolution, so it's bound to happen. But on the flip side of that, you can't just tell everybody to, you know, stay slow and while the world's getting faster, coming to race and outrun, you know, everybody in Memphis, they have to evolve with the times and that's what they're doing now. And one of the biggest things that I have seen people gripe about the 405 is they're not street cars anymore. They changed it from the fastest street cars in the world to the fastest street raced cars in the world. And it's because none of them is street cars anymore. Yes, at one time they was then and tagged, you know, when they would left Detroit, they was legit cars and they have evolved into what they are now, which is basically pro mods. And there's a few of them who still claim to be a back half car, but let's be real. But it's evolution and it shows that JJ and them is willing to, you know, evolve themselves to keep the show going where we have seen a couple of people fail at the same thing. JJ's personality and what he brings to the show is also what is going to keep that show going. They all get along and it's not a lot of arguing. That's something different than what we've seen from the 405 for so long. And I just wanted to point out that Memphis seems to be evolving like the 405 had to do to maintain themselves as the very top in the street racing world. So, you know, to me, that shows that they are, you know, going to be here for a while. I want to say Big Chief said in his interview with Sam that they had, you know, the network had bought another 50 episodes, and I don't know if that means throughout multiple shows or just the 405, but 50 episodes. But that is really all that I wanted to talk about. I am making a video, and I'm going to bring back the Corvette. I want to talk to y'all about some stuff. Um, it'll probably be tomorrow before I get it filmed. I am about to, and I'll video some of it, but I'm about to throw the motor back into the little kit car behind me, the 34, and I may video some of that and wiggle it in this video or the next, but I also want to get all of my stuff that the fans have sent and let everyone go through that and let's make a decision on who's going to win that 50 bucks. I just want to bring my channel up to date with stuff that I've been talking about for a while and have just kind of, as life has went on, prevented me from doing. I still have that giveaway going. I still have stuff going, and I haven't talked about it much, but it is still coming. I'm going to do it in the next day or so. Everything is out here in the shop, so I will put something in the video letting you know when I plan on going live. That way, some of you guys can help me decide on who won the giveaway. So, so... The email address is on the screen for the channel. I have seen in the comments people asking how they can contact me. There is how you can contact me. Send me an email to the one on the screen. Also, the P.O. box is still open. If you would like to send something, you might see it in a video. We'll come up with something to do with everything that has been sent into the channel. And thank you guys for watching. The editing and the work that goes into these videos you know, I'm doing this for fun and just to connect with the car community. So I just hate to see all the negativity and I'm going to end this one right here. Thank you for watching Godspeed and I'll see you in the next one.